Hi, welcome to the GBS workshop. Just thought we'd have a look at a uh, custom built car we've done for a customer. Um, it's leaving the workshop this week, but we'll have a quick look over it. Um, so it was a custom chassis that we built um, running a motorbike engine. The customer has always been into his bikes, running Kawasaki bikes for the last 15 years and wanted to have a Kawasaki engine in his car. So we've gone with the Kawasaki 1400 GTR. Uh, which is similar to the ZZR engine and then we've done a bespoke chassis build for the car um, looking at the engine <coughs> um, started off with the GTR engine which was originally a shaft driven engine in the bike we had to do some custom modifications to the engine itself machining off some of the crank casing um, or gearbox casing to allow the mount of a specially made flange to then run the prop um, longitudinally in the car because the bike engine was actually 90 degrees to where it is now. Um, so we did the custom work on the engine um, to get the drive flange mounted. We then got our standard zero chassis um, off of the engine up and we've done a bespoke chassis with all the engine mounts actually part of the chassis. Um, so rather than mount it in a cradle or anything it's actually a structural part of the chassis uh, it's a lot nicer way of doing it it's a stiffer way of doing it it's it's the right way um, <clears throat> and all the mounting goes through the engine um, and you can take the engine out still quite easily um, we've then got prop shaft transfer box on this one we've gone with the quaif uh, gearbox that gives us reverse um, front prop shaft has got a rubber coupling built in so it's a tube within a tube with a rubber center just to take a lot of the shock loads out which is really important um, to prolong the life of the gearbox. Um, Quaif gearbox mount <coughs> is mounted to the chassis um, but we've also got an extra um, fish plate mounting we've found in the past on them um, you can get some vibration and oscillation so the extra mounting uh, makes a big difference to the refinement. For the controls we've got our reverse gearbox that pulls in and out and disengages or engages reverse and then we've got our gear lever for the sequential gearbox on the bike which is a push-pull cable um, so we've got the cable that runs through nicely rooted bracket on the engine rose joint onto the um, gear lever and that gives you uh, one forward um, and then pulling back through the gears and you're neutral on the clutch we're running the standard slave cylinder going up into the standard um, gen 2 pedal box and then we've just sized the master cylinder to get the right clutch feel and travel without overthrowing the clutch uh, we have put a slightly uprated clutch in this and some heavier springs just to help take the extra load and weight of the car um, also on the engine we've done um, slightly different on the intake so the customer wanted to keep the clean lines on the bonnet with no bulges or anything so we've done some longer runners and then inside here we've got um, trumpets so we've actually taken this off our our throttle bodies that we manufacture in house um, so we're using the same trumpets and everything and done the runners um, actually increase the intake length um, which seems to have given us a little bit more torque on the dyno um, we've also done a custom exhaust manifold so it's a four into one um, equal length manifold packaged it up as tight as we can we've got a bit of exhaust wrap close to the headers where it's tight and then we've also done a different side panel to normal um, just to help with some of the heat so the standard alley side panel that's bonded on but we've actually put some louvers in it so we've managed to get it in the machine and put some louvers on just helps to get rid of some of the heat and then it's our standard exhaust system with the cap built in that's all IVA compatible um, or compliant um, on the oil system on the engine um, problem on a lot of bike engines is because <clears throat> on a normal bike you are you're rolling into the corner and that so your center of gravity and your center of force is always going through the through the tire so it's forcing the oil into the sump in a car you've got lateral loading and the loading is different on the oil system so they're more prone to starvation and oil movement um, especially when you then have to shorten the sump so on this we've shortened the sump um, we've not gone for a full dry sump setup um, which we have in the past on some the customers mainly going to be going on the road but what we've done is actually put a aqua sump system uh, and we've got the oil cooler in here and a remote filter so the idea of this system is that you have oil pressure um, it goes into here and this has got a, a separator piston in so as the oil pressure builds up it moves this piston to a given pressure we set it at 
there's a check valve. So if it ever picks up any air, this will then move back so it holds oil in the engine. So you've got, um, it seems to be about 20 to 25 seconds of oil pressure. If you just flick the switch, and just purely went off this. So you can pre-prime the engine. So if you had an oil starvation on the pickup, you've still got oil in your engine, so you're not gonna cause any damage. Um, so it's a kind of a, a bit of a halfway house from a full dry sump system. Um, but for this application, it's, it was the right way to go. Um, fueling wise, it's standard. The standard injectors and everything, running one of our ATR regulators, uh, standard three bar. Then we've done a custom engine loom on this and we're running the Emerald K6 Plus. Um, so it's all fully mappable. Um, fairly standard setup, we use the Emeralds and the Life ECUs. And then we're running the Ames Dash and that's canvas linked to the ECU. So all your data's going across. So we've got all the warm up phases in there, all the um, limits and everything. So depending on what you're doing, they're all on there. Um, then also on this car, the customer has gone with, well, the amazing purple paint work, um, which when it's in the sunlight looks awesome. But we've done all the ATR hubs and everything um, with the anodizing in the purple. So it's all custom colors everywhere and a few little details. We've got the carbon fiber wings. So it's gone carbon wings, carbon dash. We've got a carbon side trims on the car, carbon stone guards, uh, even a passenger um, foot support in carbon. We've got the standard um, GBS seats, but we've got the heated seat option. So you've got your switch on there and you've got the heated seats in um, two temperature levels. And then we've gone with the wider three inch belts with the nice um, aero type catch. Uh, makes it a lot easier getting out than God for the aluminium adjusters. Uh, Momo steering wheel. Um, and we've got the quick release boss as well. And then we've got the alley stalks. Um, we have added in as well an air fuel ratio gauge. Um, we're running a full wideband Lambda. Um, it's also through the ECU and on the dash, so you've got a bit of log in there. Um, but again, the customer wanted one in there. We've got the boot cover, um, all the boot areas carpeted out. We've got the new aluminium fixings on the seat belts. We've also used that same fixing actually on the front indicators just to finish it off. Rear diffuser, um, which we've done in the gray that matches the headlamps around. So there's a couple of little touches of the uh, metallic gray on there. The all up weight of the car um, was 525 with a full tank of fuel. So this is a little bit lighter than the 2.5 Gervatex, which are normally weighing in at around 600 or just shy of 600. Um, because of the, the slightly lighter weight, we've gone a bit less on the spring rating. We're running our ATR Alley monotube dampers. We played about a little bit with the shimming on them. We've still got our 50-50 weight distribution um, that we've got on, on all the zeros. Um, it does feel quite a bit lighter to drive and a little bit livelier. You can feel that extra weight saving um, and there's potential for getting the weight even further with taking the carpets out and making it a little bit more race stroke track orientated. Also running the Sparco wheels, um, which are a Ford's wheel, which are probably about the lightest 15 inch out there. And then it's got our ATR 300 mil floating disc and four pot calipers on the front and on the rear, it's got the aluminium handbrake caliper and then it's got our aluminium billet uprights with the rose joint toe link. And we're running an eight inch wheel on the back just for that extra bit of traction. Uh, all in all, these weight savings that make, make for quite a nice drive. You can definitely feel that, that the car's a little bit lighter, a um, bit more responsive. Um, the, the engine's producing, about 145 horsepower, so very similar to what was in the original bike. We've kept it as stock as possible, um, but it's a nice torque spread, very nice feel to it. Um, and yeah, it's quick, lively, lively car to drive. So I guess everyone wants to hear what it sounds like. So we're on a push button start. Um, also the light on the start button is linked to the Aquasump, so you know it's on and working. Um, Run!
really nice induction bar, the extra length and the open trumpets, you can really hear it. You can actually feel the air in your chest when you're doing it. Um, being the bike engine as well, it's a lot more responsive. Um, compared to the car engine, um, even though on the car engine you do run the light of flywheels, which does make a massive difference. With this car being a special, um, almost a one-off with this engine type, we'll, we'll take on and look at loads of different engine, engines, whether that be a bike engine, we've just done a rotary engine for someone, we've done a couple of diesel ones. Um, so if you have got a project in mind where you want to do something slightly different, um, give us a shout. Um, we've kind of got that custom engineering side because we, we make everything in-house. It enables us to, to actually do the bespoke engineering and that to do the nice installations on the different engine options out there. Um, so if anyone has got a project in mind or something a bit different, get in touch. So within the GBS workshop, we get involved in quite a lot of projects. Um, it's mainly doing zeros, whether that's IVA, upgrades, that could be a performance upgrade, styling upgrades, carbon trim, engine mods, or just general servicing and maintenance. Um, we'll do anything. We also do many other seven type cars, um, and then we get involved in a few other projects. Um, behind me, um, you may have noticed there's a Lotus early 90s F1 car that we're doing a full rebuild on and we'll do a separate video and look at that closely because it's a really exciting interesting project um, we've also got a Morgan in that's um, race Morgan having some tuning parts and we're developing a few ATR parts and um, from our range so it'll be a um, damper throttle bodies etc um, we've taken on all sorts of different work from reverse engineering of certain components specialist parts um, we're all into our cars so yeah, any inquiries, get in touch.